This is Bianca Ketter reporting live for STV.com, the student voice. Today we're going to be watching a demonstration of both the pros and against the presidency of Ellen Johnson Sirleaf of Liberia. As you can see here, the demonstrators are now arriving and the police are here to make sure that the opposing parties are well separated. party even brought a casket with Ellen Johnson's relief's picture on top. I wonder what this represents. Let's find out. Give it up! 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 Give no, you must Our children are this suffering for the lady. and dying. It's for the dead. It's for the dead. Wow. What a casket with Ellen Johnson's relief's picture on top. Hey, what? Is it, is it those that die? Right? Look, right. when somebody said not for violence, it doesn't mean they're not against violence. Huh? When somebody said they're not for violence, it doesn't mean they're not against violence. Oh, so you are not against violence. He's, he's saying he's not for violence and he's against violence. Exactly, because but, that represented violence that was inflicted on the CD part, yeah. CDC policy. But by you bringing yeah, it down, you saying, mean you, you, it's, it's representative. It's that's in fact. That's what happens. But it's the perception. When somebody see that example, if I put a coffin in front of your house, okay? 
and I protested that in front of your house. What do you think that coffin represents? Hey, you caused the present death? No, no, no. No, you no, got no, the no, present no, no, death to no. him. No. From, uh, look at you don't listen, even know what you're talking listen, about. Give the man a benefit. Of that. No, I'm saying the man is demonstrating listen. his limitation. Right. You, 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 already explained, you already explained what that was. Okay? I, 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 you I, 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 I see what I'm saying. You don't know me. I see what I'm saying. You don't know this. I decide who we are. I'm saying. What I'm saying. I have the right. What I'm saying. What I'm saying. You already told us what it is. Okay? But what I'm saying is the perception. Perception to whom? So the, if I go, what I'm saying, if I bring a casket, if I put a casket in front of the house, uh -huh. okay, what would you assume? Like I said, you're attributing a death to me. That's what it is. You the attributing a, a good attributing a death to you. Right. Okay. A death. Right. Who's death? The person who died in Liberia. That's you what know that. About. You know that. But you just said but some Liberian come. You think you, you think we just jumped to a conclusion like a stupid person and I asked some people, some people you don't understand. But that's the because inside the of it. They refused it was the to same, understand. It was a similar thing that Charles Taylor used in 1979 with Talbot, right? Remember? They refused yes. to understand. I understand that. But it's similar. Charles Taylor, where's Charles Taylor right listen, now? Listen, it's a pattern, okay? What I'm saying, when Charles Taylor walked with a casket, it was for Talbot's death, right? No, all right. He was protesting. I don't believe that. You can protest without no, I'm not saying. I'm, I'm not saying that's the what you're saying. explicitly say okay. that with a picture of table, with a table in, in, in the coffin. No, that's, that's what a it means. Different thing. You have, you have table picture. That way, means you uh, have Ellen picture in a casket. What I'm saying, we don't know. No, huh? My man, then I, you can I, have your conjecture. You entitled to it. They would not. Would not. Would not argue that. that. I understand that. that. What I'm saying is the perception that is given. Perception to whom and who does it okay. matter to? It matters to others who might have that wrong. Who might have the wrong perception. Oh, yeah. oh Africa, yeah, the children. And I cry, and I cry, cry Africa. And I cry, and I cry, cry Africa. And I cry, and I cry, no one had me. Fill them with a speed. Please state your name. My name is Florence Formula Harris. I am the president of the Liberian Community Association in the Washington metro area. And what is your reason for being here today? Well, my reason for being here is to support our country because whatever affect Liberia, affect our community here, we have our parents, our brothers and sisters back home. So I'm here to support our government. Um, what is your view on the protesting that's going on? Well, you know, we all have our right to to assemble and demonstrate. It's a right, and we have to make use of that right. But uh, when I feel that people have a gender, you know, they uh, we had election in Liberia, and uh, the first round, Madam Ellen Johnson said it won, but she did not win the required amount per constitution of Liberia, so they had to go to the second round. And they went to the second round, and she won, overwhelmingly. The people, the people voted for her. We have to live with that. Whether we like it, some people might have different views as to why she shouldn't be the president, but the people have spoken because they went to the ballot box. And we here in the diaspora have to respect the choice of the people. Do you feel, how do you feel on the fact that they're trying to impeach or get them to recount the vote? Well, well you know, the uh, election is over yeah. and she was certified so they can talk and do all the rumbling they want. Nothing can be changed. What we have to focus right now is, don't get me wrong, Liberia has a long way to go. What we as individuals can do is to try to assist in whatever way possible, be it opening a business back home, be it helping a child to go to school. That's what we have to focus on right now. In pitching any justice relief, that it will not happen because she has been elected by the people. There's nothing we can do about it. What we can do to help our Liberian people is to either help economically or help someone to go to school. The kids over there, the youth, you know, we have a lot of our kids that are unemployed. By demonstrating, telling Ellen to go, you know, we not solve the problem. Why we solve the problem now is for us 
as Liberians living outside of Liberia to go and contribute our share to the development of our country. With all the demonstrations and protests that are going on, do you think there is hope that it make things worse? I don't think so. I don't think so because as you can see, it's just a handful of people. Uh, the advertisement has been going on for over two months and it's just a handful of people. So it, 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 it won't have any, any effect. Yeah. You were in Liberia not too long. Yes, I just left from Liberia about three weeks ago and I witnessed the election. Yeah. How are the conditions? Well, um, being someone who have always traveled to Liberia, I travel basically every year. And each time you travel, you see a change. You see changes are being made. So uh, the condition six years ago is quite different from what it is today. There's still room for improvement. And Give us six more years, Liberia will be the envy of West Africa. Okay, so you feel that she is improving? Very much so, yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much, yeah. Suffering and dying for anger Flies keep crawling all over them faces Jehovah we pray we need peace in Africa Unity in all our nation Jehovah we Now we will speak with one of the main advocators against the presidency of Ellen Johnson Sirleaf. Here's Jerry Wynn of the Liberian African News Service in Washington, D.C. You're saying that you left in what Give it up, I left in 1981, August 9, 1981. Um, it, it was the very day that they arrested his Give vice head of state, Thomas Wesson, when Give I arrived on my college campus and called back to Liberia. That was the first Give news up, I was man. told. And I had worked in the Give executive up, mansion as a ELBS, up, uh, Ministry of Information uh, Television Committee assigned up, to the executive Give mansion during the administration of President Hubbard. And of course, the coup took place, Sergeant Doe, and then I left a year Give after up, for studies in the United States. I had not gone back uh, for 30 years. The first time I went back was this year, July, uh, for the funeral of my mom. And Liberia had completely changed. I was shocked. Couldn't believe it. The place is overcrowded. I mean, not a single working traffic light in the country. Uh, as a result of the war, people left the interior to, for the safety and comfort of, of, of Monrovia. In uh, pre-war days, Monrovia's population was around, what, 300, 400,000? But now it's over one and a half million people. No new housing, and of course, no electricity, no drinking water, you know. Monrovia is, 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 is just a time bomb waiting to explode health-wise, you know. And uh, people are suffering. Unemployment is 85 percent, over 85 percent. And in this filled and bankrupt economy, uh, things that have happened on the watch, I call it the open letter, to Alan Jones Salif, but also to Henry Boyma Famula, Tipote, and Edmund Sawyer. These guys were, you call them, they call themselves the revolutionaries, you know. They started the whole thing here that led to the overthrow of the Tobit government. And then, of course, the PRC came in. And so I'm asking them, is this a revolution? They are taking part in this government. Famula is the national security advisor to President uh, Salif. And with all the police brutality, I'm asking them, is this the revolution? And so, and then I painstakingly detailed corruption and other missteps on the president's watch. Give me up, Huh? Oh, you, uh, man, this is a whole book. You probably have to take a copy of Let me give you a typical example. A typical example would be when $1 million was illegally transferred from the National Bank of Liberia to Echo Bank. Those that were involved in that syndicate, they had copied a format. The new account number matches the president account number. So when the whole thing was exposed in the press, the governor of the Central Bank of Liberia, Mill Jones, he used to be here. Uh, we all used to attend the Sino County Association meeting. He is now the, um, the governor of the Central Bank of Liberia. He said the reason the bank did not question the authenticity of the letter was because they had received similar letters, similar requests, same wording from the office of the president. I call it the underground railroad, the underground, the underground railroad triangle of money siphoning and corruption. The letter comes from the president's office. It goes to the deputy minister of finance, Afrida Stewart. Then from Afrida Freeva, it goes to the bank. And on this particular day, it was the um, 
the deputy governor of the central bank, Ethel Davis. These are the questions I'm asking. This is supposed to be a democracy. I'm a citizen. I have the right to ask these questions. And we need answers from the president. What do you feel is the better time? Well, she's, she's won now, quote unquote, won now. So I have no choice now. You know, I, I was advocating for, I was rooting for other people. They didn't win. So I'm not going to, you know, dwell on spilled milk now. That, that's all spilled milk, you know. But since she, quote unquote, won, she has to, you know, answer these questions. So where does she intend to lead our country? I need to point out one other thing, but you cut it off. Yeah. Well, one other thing I was going to talk about is that, take for example, when she talked about in 2006, her first budget to the legislature, in her first budget, first, let's go back a little bit. Let me read one time. When the Liberian economy was performing at its peak, you will find the information in here too. When the Liberian economy was performing at its peak, she was finance minister then under William Howard Republic. From 1979 to 1980, the lowest paid government worker was making $250 US a month. The president's salary at the time was US $36,000 a year. Now, if she comes in and inherits a full and bankrupt economy and a depleted treasury, the prudent thing to do will be that, okay, we're not going to maintain the same salaries because we don't have the money. You know, the economy is down. But in our first budget, while lowering the lowest paid civil servant salary from $250 a month, she brought it down all the way to $16. It was the legislature that said, no, $16 is not even enough to buy a half bag of rice. So they put it up to $30. That was the salary for the lowest paid government worker in her first budget, $30 a month. Now, this is why I'm here, to, to expose corruption, injustice, and what have you. Did you know about all these things I'm raising? All right, you, you, can, uh, you can get a copy of this. And um Varma Reeves. Concern Liberia. Well, Liberia, we, we've actually gone a step and beyond what I think anybody had calculated for, for Liberia. I would definitely know what's happening here, really. Um we have a stable economy. Right? We do have our debt waived. Liberia has experienced a growth rate that, that is above the African um, average or in the West African region. And we've actually reached a point where, where, we, where we have complete debt forgiveness through the poverty um, reduction and strategy that the government has put in place. Now, the problem that I see with this whole gathering and the, and the, and the situation back home is that it has the propensity to actually affect the long-term economic growth of the country. It's simple. Investors want a stable environment in which they put in their money. Okay? If the environment is not stable, at the end of the day, investors will withdraw their investments. Okay? They will be reluctant to do that. And what that does to the country is that it hurts everybody because at the end of the day, unemployment rate increases. Liberia has a pretty high unemployment rate. I think it's at 85% of the last time we checked. Okay? So now, the purpose of investors is to actually hire locals that will actually reduce their unemployment rate. Other than that, the stable economy will also lead to a private sector that Liberians themselves can invest in the economy. Okay? I think one of the, the, the dangerous things about, about events like these that are happening is that you find out a lot of those who are involved are people who have not invested in the private sector. Okay? And the thing is simple. Countries that have been stable in Africa, Ghana, okay, for example, they have a, a, a program in which 51% 50, of all businesses are owned by their own. So the chances of anybody going out there and actually starting some crazy activity is, is minimized because at the end of the day you have your investment to lose. Okay? So um, in terms of the whole situation, we've come a long way. We have a long way to go. However, this situation, as I said, has the tendency okay, to, 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 to somehow put investors more in a conservative stand. Is that truly, I mean, really will have a greater impact? It probably will have an impact in the short term. Okay? But in the long term, I don't see that happening. Okay? There, there are already millions and millions, in fact, billions of dollars, I think 16 point something billion dollar investments already in Liberia. Okay? Um, and a lot of these companies also 
you have also national governments that have also invested their resources, their hard tax dollars into it. So for, for, for the, this situation to have a long-term impact, I don't see it. It's going to be a short term. And, and honestly, it's, I think it's a waste of time for, 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 for people to do that because, as I said, the impact is, is, is minimal. The investments in Liberia, they're actually, to, they're actually set to reap long-term investments. It's, did I answer your question? Yes, you did. Okay, very good. thoroughly. Thank you very much. Scott. <laughs> in response to Ian, we have Geyer Fumble, a former Liberian legislator. My view is that uh, we are on the right side of history and they are on the wrong side of history. Simply after the elections, you know, and everything is done, is, is certified and uh, is declared uh, 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 free, fair, transparent and credible. I think that ends the whole thing. People should put their lives back together. They should begin to reconcile and make sure that we can have a government of one understanding. But the way to go about it is not to try to hijack or to cause violence or to provoke senseless, uh, 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 you know, catastrophe in the street, hoping that that will catapult you to where you want to be. It's unacceptable. So how do you feel about May? Was it May 11th? Uh -huh. What happened on that day about the student? Uh, well, the student, you know, it's unfortunate that uh, in our own librarian situation, these things happen. And our heart goes out to the injured, you know, uh, students, the family. And we know that the students are well intentioned, but sometimes, sometimes anxiety emotions find themselves into these inner workings and people don't sit to you know carefully analyze things critically analyze and then they uh, make decisions hasty decision that leads to these uh, kind of uh, you know unnatural things it was said that there was peaceful demonstrations going on in the well, let me help you. Is, is that the November 7th situation? Well, um, first of all, under the Librarian laws, to be able to do a demonstration, you must obtain a permit from the Department of Justice. So, uh, if that is not done, you're in violation of the law. And if you go outside to do it, and you vandalize or you do anything that is meaningful to the interest of the, the, the safety of the public, you can be arrested, okay, and then the, the law takes its course. Now, what obtained is that they were within their own headquarters, which is fine. You can stay in your headquarters, but if you step outside your headquarters onto the main street where you provoke the situation, I'm not for violence. And I don't think it was right that one person died. Mamadi Kuma died. I don't think it was right that so many people got injured. But, you know, the police have to come in to, to conduct, you know, law and order. The police director was relieved of his post, which I think is commendable of the president. And, uh, uh, and the blames have been squarely placed at, uh, you know, some, the provocative aspect by CDC, of course, and the police, wherever they went, ultra virus outside their bounds, they will be dealt with. Too. To support the government, we have had a very, very unique electoral process ended, and we feel that uh, we should be making headwinds. We feel that um, there should be a continuity into government. We feel that the good governance nature of personnel in John Salif should be continued. She's an accolade of the Nobel Prize. And I think that will also count to put us to another level, will be respected. And beyond that, she along with the Liberian people have ushered us into the 21st century, regaining our place at a civilized nation, at a table with other civilized countries, and we're now respected in the Committee of Nations. That's what she's doing for us. In fact, she, 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 she inherited a nation you know, that was nearly failed, what called a pariah state. Today, nobody refers to Liberia as a state. Today, people refer to Liberia as, you know, the darling of, of the West. Ellie, the darling of the West, because of what she's doing. Isolated incidents should not be used as a means of saying, look, um, you know, this has been the way, you know, of life. This is the modus operandi of this government. No, 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 no. 
those are isolated cases. You know, uh, it's not, you know, and they're not happening on a continuous basis. And in past, you know, regimes, people didn't have these freedoms that we are enjoying. They were denied. People get out there, you say you want it, there's freedom of expression, the freedom of movement, and the press are open. And so uh, no one is trying to suppress, curtail, or preclude the press from doing that thing which they want to do. You know, but Article 15 of the Constitution also say that, yeah, you have the right to free assembly, but you have to be aware of any abuse thereof. So you can assemble. We are assembling here now. But if I went across and hit somebody, right, my freedom is curtailed. The police will pick me up. So that's all we're saying. What obtains here in the civilized world must obtain in our own country. You know, because we have to teach the younger generation, you know, a way to grow up so that they can respect, have love for, for nation. You know, a nation who. So, do you feel that for the peace of the citizens in this state or the country that she could at least do the recount like they want? Well, you see, it was not only Liberians that participated into the entire electoral process. You had the UN, you had the Carter Center, you had about 48 independent observers and you know, observer participants. Okay, uh, our ECOWAS were there doing logistics and providing security. So it's out of 48 observers, and everybody said it was credible, it was free, fair, transparent, and equitable. Come on. You know, and, and, and they had an opportunity. They had an opportunity, first round. If you say back in 2010, the police or uh, uh, brutally uh, uh, my handle uh, students, then you had an opportunity when you went to the first election to have defeated Elling on the first round. Then that would have been no vote of confidence. But she keeps, she emerged the highest. So she went to the second round and she succeeded. So I think the issue is moot. We need to put that behind us, you know, close ranks as Liberians and, 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 and move forward. I think that's what we should be doing, moving forward. I, I appreciate that the fact that they want to speak out, which is good. It's democracy. That's the essence of democracy. You know, uh, it has in it, you know, democratic values and democratic tendencies. But we're saying, don't preach war, as some of them are doing. We'll go there, we'll get Ellen out, we'll do this. No, 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 no. That what, that what, you know, uh, uh, sensitize some of us to come out. You hear people talking about, we'll move the government, we'll give it up. Give it up. Give what up? Why? To give it up to whom? So, you have many elected as a person and say give it up, so you step down, who are you going to give it up? Right. I mean, so, uh, uh, and, and, and trying to hold people hostage to their job is not a way to go. You know, things have to be done in, through the proper channel. You know, we have to respect one another, and you know, and we have to, you know, Torba, Torba always said, you know, patriots is a show, it's a, it's a show with a national progress. If we're not patriots, all dream of Liberia being that shiny city. On the top of the mountain that we all can be part of. So our children, grandchildren, and you all can go back to take it over. Because we are past. So we have to teach you people the right way to do things. You know? And if you know the right way to do things, then obviously you'll grow knowing the right way to do things and be part of it. So uh, I want to thank you for the interview, except you have more questions to ask. Go ahead. Go ahead. With the conditions that are going on in my world, as far as the citizens are saying, there's no running order and the street lights and everything, do you think that she could have done, she could do more as president to take care of it? She has done extremely well. There are challenges. When you inherit a failed state, not nearly failed, but failed state, when you inherit a failed state where everything is shattered, no running water, no electricity, people shot. I was there through the war. As a matter of fact, I was in the legislature, representing the great people of Grand Cape Marconi. So I'm not only speaking as, you know, I was up there, we are making decisions for Liberia. And I was also, one time, senior political advisor of Madame Rufer when she was head of state. So I have been within the mix of government. And I was national chairman of the United Party in Liberia. So I have been there. I'm not just speaking from, you know, from the outskirts of things, but I, I'm speaking as I look into things. So all I'm telling you here is that uh, there are challenges in every country. But if you inherit a failed state where nothing is working, I know the expectations are high. But let me leave you with this word. Rome was not building one day. 
The Chinese proverb says a million mile journey begins with what? The first step. The six year was the first step. We have to build schools, primary school for almost everybody. I mean, you know, free primary, free elementary school, uh, healthcare delivery system, clinics, uh, roads, uh, infrastructure, and you know, we're moving systemically. You know, uh, it's a recovery system. You know, yeah, expectations are high, but there are challenges too. If she inherited government broke, no money. But we should be thankful at least that when you take over as president of Liberia during your time, right, you have no debt to worry about because there will be enough money for everybody. She has signed over 11 contract concession agreements. Why? So people can get jobs. And everything has gone through uh, ratification. So it's not just, you know, you can't change a winning horse in the middle of the road. She's winning. She's the darling of the, the West. Well, let's let's use her expertise. Let's use her knowledge. Let's use, let's, let's still get on her uh, on her on her goodwill. And she faced Liberia and say, you know, I want you doing what? Go sit down. Let the young people come and fight for the But for now, there are a lot of people that I know want to be president. A lot of people have ambition. What I advise: wait. She's training out the country. Fix everything up. Then we can move on to do to do something better. Thank you. It was a pleasure. Thank you very much. Good. And the supporters of the presidency of Ellen Johnson Sirleaf conclude with the Liberian National Anthem. Yeah. Hey, 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 h